Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the MGM Grand here on the Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada, for our main event. 12 rounds of heavyweight action between these two great warriors. Bad Intentions is approaching the ring now, and this ring walk can tell you so much. Look at the focus on his face. He's on his way to the ring. You can see it in his eyes. You just know he's got that feeling tonight. is done it is simply time to fight teddy what role can the fans play on the fighters the atmosphere of the arena when they know there's two guys meeting up that can bang an immature fighter a less experienced fighter can get caught up he can try to satisfy the audience that's a quick way to be going into the shower earlier than you wanted to solid counter punch by bad intentions Place counter punch by bad intentions. <laughs> Able to dismiss his opponent. Oh, and there you go. Bad intentions is stunned and he is hurt. All right, punch it up. Bad intentions. His corner will really need to get after that swelling. by bad intentions. Ninety seconds to go here in this round. Side to side, move your head. What do you think is most misunderstood about the heavyweight division? I think it's human nature for people to see these big goliaths that they start to think that, hey, they're more sure of themselves. That these guys have more of an abundance of security about themselves, about confidence. And really, it's the opposite. In some ways, these big giants, they're really unsure of themselves because they know they can do damage. They're also worried about damage being done to them. Nice block by bad intentions. Blocked by bad intentions. Good looking counter punch. Last ten seconds. Well placed, well timed combo up top. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm gonna give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down, blue or red corner, what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Listen 
more head movement. Let's see some more head movement. Get out of the way. Keep your distance. Very nice defensive guard there. Able to cover up that gut. Wow! Oh, he turns it over right into a hook. Finish with your heart. Use your feet. There's a taste of the sweet science. You see the skill he has in counterpunching. And you know what he's doing? He's taking his opponent's jab away. Tensions, his movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. Opponent's body shot. remaining in this round. Coming to the end of this round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, a round like that where it's a lot of busy activity and both guys being busy, when you were a trainer, are those the kind of rounds that you prefer or do you like the pace to be a little slower? Does it depend on each guy? No, if I have a fight, I'd rather have a guy fighting a guy that you never see him. <laughs> Leave me the heck alone. And where I'm in control all the time. But the fans love to see a fight like that. Nice block by bad intentions. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go. Because every time he jabs, he gets caught. What a chin. Can you believe the shots this guy's absorbing? And more importantly, can his opponent believe it? You know what? You want to hit a guy. So you figure that that's a good thing. That's an encouraging thing. This is a case where his opponent might get discouraged just by seeing his guy take those kind of shots. Nice block by bad intentions. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Good block by bad intentions. Very clean offense from defense by bad intentions. Another one lands. It's been two minutes of non-stop action. Now the final minute has arrived. Needs to 
to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Off the mark there. Ten seconds to go in this third round. And another right hand comes in. Here we go with the fourth round. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Getting it done with that straight right hand. A good block. Good looking counter punch. Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by bad intentions. Excellent counter punch by bad intentions. There it is! Bad intentions is crushed by a big right hand. His legs look shaky. He was hurt. That's a good... Oh! Oh, that got him. That wrecked him right there. He's down for the first time. So he goes down, but able to get up to his feet. Teddy, what should he be thinking about now? Well, right now, just surviving, but... If he survives, then he better figure out why he was put on the floor. Good block by bad intentions. End of the round. So he scores the knockdown and now heads back to his corner. Teddy, do you ever have to calm a guy down after he scored a knockdown? That's a really great point because a lot of times... That can be the turning point, but not for your guy that scored the knockdown, for the other guy. Because sometimes when you score a knockdown, you start to think it's going to be an easy night. And you forget what you knew when you came in, that it wasn't going to be an easy night. You're going to have to bring all the tools out of the tool shed. And it's important to remember that. I would assume there has to come a point in this fight where he has to make the commitment to throw the power punches. It's hard to envision a way he's going to win this fight without going down that road. He doesn't have the confidence to do it. I don't know if he's mentally strong enough to do it. I think he's worried about throwing hard at the guy because maybe in his mind that means the guy will throw hard back at him. <laughs> now 
Not the most accurate uppercut you'll see. You get the sense that they know no other way how to fight. They are going at it, back and forth, toe to toe, punch for punch. Oh, and he comes back with an uppercut there for getting hit. What a fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. Halfway through this round. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Throws a counter punch there. Bad Intentions is showing us that he is willing to stick with the game plan. But, Teddy, that game plan saw him knocked down earlier in this fight. What would you be telling him? You know, in some ways, I'd tell him good because you have to go with what you have. You know, you can't completely change. That's not possible in the course of a fight. You are who you are. So it's not the game plan necessarily, Joe, or the style that's wrong. It's the execution of the game plan. That has to be done better. Trying to keep his distance, trying to keep his range, but still, you have to be offensive-minded. Yeah, you do. If you're just standing on the outside at the beginning, that's okay, but then your opponent is going to walk in on you. There has to be something threatening, something damaging to keep you outside. Ten seconds to go in this round. There it is! That's a gut-buster counter shot. End of this round. Joe and Teddy sitting ringside with you. It gives us time to reflect on the bigger picture of boxing. You know, it was interesting. We had a fan walk up to you earlier today and say, hey, I know you earned everything from the legendary Custom Auto, the great trainer. And he said to you, what's the one thing you took away from all your years with Cus? What did you say to him? Well, it wasn't a paycheck. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> because Cus didn't believe in paying you for that. He said, you're going to college, you're getting a valuable uh, education and you're not even being forced to pay a tuition so I understood that we worked seven days a week so there was no union uh, Cus believed in working on Sundays so you couldn't go complain and say I'm being overworked but I think seriously that the most important thing that I learned of course that from a technical standpoint you have to be really secure in those areas no matter how much talent a fighter has you have to teach them right teach them the fundamentals but mentally you have to understand that a fighter's really always under fear. And you have to understand those dimensions, those parameters. And you have to be able to find a way to get in there, understanding how he feels mentally, and understanding how that can impair his judgment, stop him from doing simple physical things. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. And a well-placed counter by bad intentions. Bad intentions is in a spot right now where I don't think there's any doubt about it. He's losing the fight on point. Something has to change. What could that something be? Well, he's got to land a big punch, but he's not going to do it just by closing his eyes and hoping that he hits Lotto, hoping he gets lucky. He's got to be able to time something. Maybe time a right hand over a jab. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. <laughs> Wow, holy cow! He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Come on, keep busy, guys. Come on now, come on, come on. Come on. 
punches and bunches. It worked out well there with that combo. Yeah, you know, the early punches set up the late punches. Well-targeted counterpunch by bad intentions. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down blue or red corner what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Bad Intentions has got to realize that his work rate has really dropped off a cliff. I know he got stunned earlier in this fight, but at this point, he has to at least put forth some type of aggression. He's got to get himself back in this fight. Yeah, what you're saying is not just that he's got to do physical things. We understand that, but where's it start? It starts with the mental part. He has to behave like a pro, behave like a fighter. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. Excellent counter punch by bad intentions. The jab has been able to carry the night for him so far. Why so, Teddy? Well, first of all, he's been able to get it off at the right time. His opponent, that sweet spot, you know, you hear about that in... In baseball, you want to just hit that ball in the sweet spot where the jab, he's catching his opponent just as he's starting to get into his range before he can get off. getting way of his opponent's effort. Good look at right hand after he got hit. That was a miss by bad intentions. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. Both men digging in with uppercuts. Comes right back with a shot of his own. He's able to get rid of that one. As we come to the end of the round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. Some offense of his own. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot and then comes back with an uppercut. What a good counter punch by bad intentions. Very nice defensive guard there. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. So you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. Great 
movement to get away from those punches. by bad intentions. <laughs> Devastating blow by bad intentions. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Intentions is movements really helping him out, avoiding that punch. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. End of the round here, and as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was, and you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where Leonard stole rounds at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remembered. Good block there by bad intentions. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the... Wow! Bad intentions has been stunned. Bad intentions is mounting a comeback here, Teddy. Thinks we're going against on, him. Now the tide has turned. Good things come to those who wait or those who persevere. He persevered. Good things are happening. that punch able to counter that attack it's hard to believe that he can win this fight on the scorecards that means it's do or die at this point you got to go for broke yeah that means that you got to come up with that Hail Mary pass now when you come up with that Hail Mary pass you don't just chuck the ball you have to have a receiver down there you have to make sure that he's running a certain route. Right now, he's got to look for one spot. Something to land that shot. One minute to go in a round that feels like an all-time classic. Punch for punch, they're meeting each other. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Teddy, this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say, tune in. Everybody should be watching this, right? I have a cell phone. I might do that right now. <laughs> Start dialing. Now that's some fine work right there by bad intentions. Bad intentions. He's got a bad cut now that's opened up on his cheek. A nice block by bad intentions. Good job by drawing in his opponent and then landing the counterpunch by bad intentions. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. I don't want to criticize him too much, Teddy, because by going defensive here after being stunned, hey, 
this might be the right strategy to employ. As long as he doesn't stay with it too long. It's the right strategy to employ right now at this moment. But if you're going to win the fight, you have to find a way quickly down the road to get back to where you can score points and survive and be responsible defensively. He could go down. Well, where was this earlier? All of a sudden now, you see he's being effective and being aggressive and outworking his man, when for most of the fight, he was the one being outworked. Well, eating about two dozen jabs, you know what? It can change your mind a little bit. He figures now, let the other guys start eating a little. He was stunned and staggered moments ago. Now he's right back in the fight, looking pretty good. Yeah, some guys take a little longer to recover. One of his strains is he recovers real fast. Oh! Bad intentions is stunned and he is hurt. All right, come on, come on, guys. Work it out, work it out. No holding. Able to cover up that gut. One minute to go in this round. Neither man has decided to slow down at all. Oh boy, what a round. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Locked that away, it was targeted for his head. This round comes to an end. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas ringside. I'm just looking up at the corner here at this guy that just got tagged, Teddy, this fighter who just got stunned. And I'm thinking, boy, it's like the air's come out of him a bit. He looks just so dejected now. Yeah, you know, right now he's on the side of a mountain. You know, he's up on a cliff, and he needs a rope to get down. So that's what you got to do, Joe. You don't look and say, hey, he's up on a cliff. We know that. Give him a rope. Give him advice to get down. punches well placed counter punch by bad intentions Undoubtedly, the most effective element of his entire arsenal tonight is his jab. He's so committed to fighting on the outside, and he's jabbing away beautifully. Well, Customano used to tell me, Teddy, when you're in doubt, jab. Well, this fighter, when he's been in doubt, he's jab. When he's been sure of himself, he's jab. As you said, he's made a jab fest of this all night long. What a fight. What a great, great, non-stop action fight this has been. Good work with the uppercuts. Nice job there. A minute to go in what has been a memorable round. Great stuff from these two. A stinging counterpunch after some fine defense by bad intentions. 
I'm wondering what the opposing corner is going to do here. They got to their man earlier. They were able to rock him. And really, nothing's changed. He's showing them the same exact look, the same exact style that he came here with. Well, first of all, the opponent should keep doing what he's doing. You know, you're landing, you found something that's working, stay with it until he changes. hit but he gives it right back the tactical game paying off you can see the counter punch yeah you see the counter punch but you know what i see i see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses holy cow he is damaged badly there and he goes down for a second time does he have enough this time to rise up and continue on from a big shot now he's got to have some big guts to move along you're going to find out exactly what he's made of he took a shot but he gives one of his own a left hand scores <laughs> with a left hand. Very nice defensive guard there. along the belt line blocks that one good stuff in the opening two minutes a minute to go in this round good block there by bad intentions Dismisses his opponent's headshot. He is hurt and damaged, but he's doing a real nice job of just staying away from the danger. And now he's got to find a little bit of a way to create offense without getting into that danger zone again. those elbows in blocks the body shot well which way did it go that is the question everybody Ladies wants the answer to the man with the answer is standing in the ring and here he is your winner Winner by unanimous decision, Teddy. Well, the question from the beginning was, could he get inside and make it his kind of fight? He did.